I'm going to talk a little bit different uh, from the professor. And uh, now I'm, I just want to start with the EU and the COVID-19 crisis. First, before um, passing to the COVID-19 crisis in the European Union, I will give some information about the European Union. And uh, as we all know, it was established in 1957 and what uh, six founding members, France, Germany, Italy, Belgium, Netherlands, and Luxembourg. Uh, the European Union is a sui generis uh, union and it, is, it, it can be seen as a success story because we know that uh, the European um, continent is known as the continent of wars. And uh, after the establishment of the European Union, we, we see that uh, there isn't any kind of war within the European Union member states. Uh, for that reason, it's always known as a success story. Um, the enlargement and the widening and the deepening of the European Union can be traced with the enlargements first, the widening. And the first uh, enlargement wave of the European Union was in 1974 with the United Kingdom, Denmark and Ireland, and then Greece, um, joined the European Union in 1981, Portugal, Spain, Finland, Sweden, Austria, and uh, the fifth enlargement was the, uh, the huge one because there were more than 10 member states uh, joined the European Union and the last one in 2013 and uh, the Croatia and uh, now there are 27 members of the European Union and the treaties have the European Union to deepen because it, it just started as an economic community and then they had some um, common policies and now we are talking when we are talking about the European Union we say that that is also in a political union and they uh, just deepened the that just collaborate with many areas in social life cultural life political life and economic life and the treaties helped to this deepening process and the last treaty was the lisbon treaty in 2009 and the, these treaties are the constituent part of the European Union because they tell us how and the European Union is going to work, the institutions of the European Union and the citizenship and the responsibilities of member states according to the, their um, citizens in the uh, Union. Uh, I just want to make a remark from the last treaty, the Lisbon Treaty. Uh, title 7 was added uh, to the treaty and uh, this was about solidarity clause. It is really important um, according to uh, my uh, presentation today because uh, in this article 188R, the Union and its member states shall act jointly in a spirit of solidarity if a member state is the object of a terrorist attack or the victim of a natural or man-made disaster. The Union shall mobilize all the instruments at its disposal, including the military resources made available by the member states. This is really important because within the COVID crisis, COVID-19 crisis, uh, I just looked if there is a kind of solidarity within the members of the European Union because they had an article that provide that kind of uh, solidarity. And uh, what have they achieved? Uh, they make it sustain peace. They realize common policies. Uh, health policy is not one of them, um, but they have other kinds of policies like environmental policy, agricultural policy, and uh, many others. Economic policy is one of the most important one. Uh, construct an identity. They started a, a, within the European Union uh, from the beginning to construct a European identity, realize free movement of services, capitals, goods, and persons. This is one of the uh, most important achievements of the European Union because within the internal borders, you are you can just move uh, without showing any kind of visa or passports or identity uh, identity cards, use a common currency, they just use uh, euro and uh, many other developments we can see within the European Union. 
cornerstones of the EU, uh, unity in diversity, solidarity, and freedom, uh, free movement uh, are some of these cornerstones. They are mentioned in the uh, treaties of the European Union. Uh, unity in diversity is the motto of the EU, and it consists of two parts, unity coming together to work for peace and prosperity, and diversity, the differences in name of cultures, traditions, and languages, and it's accepted as a richness. Uh, I just tried to see if there is a unity in diversity within the EU in the uh, COVID-19 crisis. Solidarity, uh, solidarity is a concept which was mentioned many times in the treaties of the European Union. It was first mentioned in the, the first treaty, Treaty of Rome. It binds Europe and overseas countries, it says. And in the Lisbon Treaty, EU shall promote economic, social, and territorial cohesion and solidarity among member states. Solidarity between the member states mentioned many times in the Lisbon Treaty. For that reason, it is really important for the EU. It's uh, one of the common values of the European Union to come together, to act together, to collaborate in uh, times of crisis, uh, in normal times as well. And the free movement uh, and borderless Europe are some of the achievements of the EU. Uh, in Article 3 of the Treaty of Rome, the activities for the purpose of common market were started and one of them was the abolition of obstacles to freedom of movement of persons, services and capital. This free movement of persons um, were provided with the Schengen Agreement. Schengen Agreement is closely related with uh, free movement because uh, it includes abolition of internal borders, strengthening and harmonizing external borders, and the common visa policy for third nationals. This means when you started your journey from Portugal, you can just go wherever you want in the EU without showing um, your passports. Uh, you don't need a visa. And uh, this is a good uh, opportunity for the citizens of the European Union. They can just leave where they want in the EU, just to work where they want. And uh, within these area, Schengen area, there are 22 EU member states and four other states. And the European Commission defines free movement of persons as a fundamental right guaranteed by the EU to its citizens. And a Schengen country may reintroduce border control for a limited time. And this is really important uh, within the crisis. We, we can say it for the migration crisis and again for the COVID-19 crisis because uh, the nation states have responsibility and have ability to reintroduce border controls if they feel a need. And uh, when we look at the crisis in the EU, uh, in the last decade, we have seen that there are lots of crises, economic crisis, migration crisis, Brexit crisis, and the last one is the COVID-19 crisis. And the financial crisis broke in the USA and the effects of crisis felt in the EU as well. Some of the EU countries were able to manage the crisis, but some of them had serious problems such as Greece. Uh, and they really had hard times during this crisis. Ireland, Spain, Portugal, and Cyprus as well. And Germany was uh, the had a management role in this crisis, and they tried to manage the crisis and help the uh, help the other member states which had problems to manage the crisis. And uh, Germany's policies, but Germany's policies, uh, what was criticized. Uh, in case of solidarity, uh, because there were some kind of discourses like certain countries, certain member states and northern member states. Um, the northern European countries were uh, a kind of accusing the certain warm for uh, being a little bit lazy. And uh, these discourses do not positive effect over the crisis uh, rather than carrying it uh, to a different level. And uh, it's it makes it to be questioned the solidarity of the European Union. 
uh, migration crisis, which starts uh, in 2011, 2012, it, uh, we, we saw the peak point in 2015 as illegal crossings to Europe increased drastically. And in that year, um, 885,000, more than 885,000 people just entered to the European Union. This huge number of people just trying to go to Germany or uh, to the northern countries such as Norway, Sweden and Finland. And uh, the European Union um, had to have some kind of measures, precautions, because the country is at the borders of the European Union, for example, Greece, for example, Italy, and uh, sometimes Hungary had really hard times. And uh, what the EU did at that time, they just had some um, agreements, EU-Turkey statement is one of them, a European agenda on migration, which includes reallocation plan. This was a really important plan to, uh, to be able to share the burden because um, some of the countries had more problems than the others. And uh, many people were at the border of uh, Greece. So they, they want to relocate these plan to the 28 of the member states. And uh, it was difficult because Greece, Hungary uh, and Italy had hard times, but uh, Czech, Czechia, Hungary and Poland refused to accept these um, reallocation plan and uh, refused to respect to their obligations within the framework. And again, the solidarity became a question mark within the European Union. And then they uh, experienced Brexit, uh, first time in the EU history, a uh, member state wanted to leave the European Union and they voted for it. And it became a reality in this year. Uh, at the end of 2020, the UK will just uh, leave the European Union and this crisis was going on. The talks of Brexit was going on. The migration crisis was going on when the COVID-19 crisis came. Uh, crisis came one after another in the last decade. This crisis caused EU to weaken. They are not ready to another crisis. And uh, they say there were disagreements, discontent among the member states. Uh, in some of these crises, border borders are closed. For example, Hungary closed its borders and started to um, have walls uh, within these uh, borders. Free movement became difficult, burden shared couldn't be possible because uh, the refusal of some of the member states to relocate uh, migrants and uh, solidarity was questioned again. And then uh, COVID-19 crisis arose. Uh, it's the kind of public health crisis. The first uh, case was reported from France in Europe on 24th of January. The UK, Italy, Spain and France were the most affected countries according to COVID-19 cases and data. Uh, we have, uh, we just experienced uh, the peak points uh, in March and April in the European Union. Numbers of cases and death tolls may lead to miscalculation because we know that states have uh, different policies about testing and if a state does less tests, it will probably make less cases. For that reason, uh, it's really difficult to uh, evaluate the situation according to these numbers. Different member states, different reactions. Uh, at first, the EU member states took independent precautions. The EU does not have a common health policy. This is really important. For that reason, uh, the states are free to determine how to react against these crises. The EU couldn't react um, for the all member states because, because of not having a common health policy. Italy, uh, just uh, in Italy, the schools were closed on the 4th of March and national lockdowns became a reality in the European Union in March. Spain especially was criticized for being lagged at this lockdown uh, because it came after uh, 43 days for, after the first case in Spain. 
And uh, in Spadum was a different uh, experience in the European Union because they didn't uh, have any kind of lockdown and they just banned the gatherings, but the students still uh, were going to school and didn't uh, close the schools. They, they just uh, go on. And uh, this was a really different uh, case in, within the European Union. And they have similar measures, even if measures came at different times, uh, halting international flights, shutting down borders, closing schools and universities, banning indoor and outdoor gatherings with upper limits and lockdowns. These were the similar measures uh, all around Europe. Uh, in Turkey as well, we had, uh, we, we closed our schools in March, uh, just like many other uh, states around the world. There were even different policies in timing of taking precautions. The UK may be a good example as they were late in implementing social distan distancing and other restrictions. They tried to have herd immunity. And problems at the beginning uh, are really, they are related about the unpreparedness of the European Union to this crisis. And they were criticized for not taking actions, not reacting immediately, and not supporting the EU member states because uh, we know that Italy asked for help for, uh, from the uh, European Union, but uh, the European Union uh, couldn't answer this um, call, and they just answered it after three weeks later, and uh, Italy's call. There were some kind of excuses within the EU. They just uh, want to make it mm, okay we had some problems uh, but there was a cause health is not within the common policies of the European Union the Commission was not prepared for such a crisis and from, for that reason there was a coordination problem in the early days of the crisis the Commission was just assigned in December 2019 and for that reason and uh, they said that we are not prepared for it we are just trying to adapt the situation and um, the policies were not okay in that moment other problems uh, according to the need some member states uh, banned the transfer of medical supplies within the borders of the European Union, in which free movement is really uh, evaluated as an assessment or as an um, achievement. Some of them were hijacked. Uh, the member states just took the masks or other kind of uh, supplies of other countries. Some of them were sold to higher prices to other countries and borders were closed. These were all opposed to solidarity, unity in diversity and free movement within the European Union. And what kind of tools they have to fight against COVID-19? Uh, they had civil protection mechanism, Corona response team, emergency response coordination center, Team Europe approach and funds uh, such as Emergency Trust Fund for Africa, Solvency Support Instrument, these were the funds that they have uh, to be able to combat against um, the COVID-19 crisis. Civil protection mechanism consists of EU member states, six participating states and the UK. It aims to strengthen cooperation, to improve prevention, preparedness and response to disaster. The EU activated its uh, civil protection mechanism on January 20. A 2020, it's an early uh, act. Uh, first, 447 EU citizens brought from China, and then uh, 10,000 people were repatriated to Europe, and uh, 500,000 became uh, came to Europe on uh, in April again. It's also used for providing personal equipment to the countries in need. A team of European doctors and nurses also developed to Italy to help the medical staff because uh, on news we saw that Italy really had hard times with the um, cases and uh, the increasing number of deaths 
for that reason, uh, Italy was really in need at the beginning of this crisis. Member states also provide assistance individually to states in need. For example, uh, Czechia sent some kind of masks to Italy and they send uh, special equipments as well. Many other uh, countries try to be in co uh, collaboration, try to be uh, in solidarity with the European countries. Turkey also sent uh, masks to UK. And uh, Corona Response Team is another tool and is another way of helping people. It actions consist of three pillars, medical field, mobility and economy. Most of the European Union tools were about the budgetary issues. They tried to, um, they tried to provide uh, financial assistance to the member states which are in need, and not just to the member states, but also to the countries in the Africa. Developments and related to uh, related to vaccine. These are also the current. Uh, there are some current agreements within the European Union. It has a vaccination strategy. Help member states to prepare their vaccination campaign. Who should be vaccinated first? How have uh, how to have a fair distribution and how to protect the most vulnerable people uh, in this vaccination um, period? The EU aims to uh, aims a safe, effective, affordable, and accessible vaccine. The EU makes agreements with companies to secure future doses because we know that it be a real. Important uh, in a in a period when uh, masks are hijacked. Uh, what will happen in case of vaccine? It's a good question, I think, and this is a good question that the EU have to has to answer. According to Commission, all member states will have access to COVID nineteen vaccines at the same time on the basis of population and size. Population size. And they made uh, some agreements, current agreements. Uh, there are agreements with AstraZeneca, three, 300 uh, million vaccine doses for Sanofi, again, 300 million vaccine doses, Johnson & Johnson, 200 million vaccine doses. And then there are also discussing uh, similar agreements with other companies, CureVac, Moderna, and BioNTech uh, are the ones that they are discussing to have um, vaccine doses. And in Turkey, we know that BioNTech is going to um, prepare this uh, vaccine uh, in the early of 2021. And they are going to try to distribute it. And uh, the European Union is trying to uh, make secure, uh, have the doses and uh, be available in the European Union. And this is a good step. And uh, distribution of uh, laboratory confirmed case of COVID-19 in the EU and the UK as of uh, 17th of November. This is the uh, yesterday's numbers. As we can see, the crisis when it began in the European Union here, it was really uh, felt devastating. But when we look to the cases in March, and when we compare it now, it's a huge number, it's a huge number, but we are not feeling it like in March or in April because the preparedness level of the European Union and it's, uh, I think it is the same for all over the world. People are more uh, aware of the uh, threat and how and they know how to react to it and uh, they know some kind of precautions and we have a hope we have a hope about the western and uh, the european parliaments uh, there are some kind of surveys about the european union how they react to this crisis and uh, one of the early surveys um, was conducted in march uh, in in uh, April and in May, and uh, 21,000 people from 21 in member states uh, just completed the interviews. And according to these interviews, more than two thirds agree that the EU should have more competences to deal with such crises. They think that it's not enough for the EU uh, to combat these crises. 
and uh, more than half of the responses are not satisfied with the solidarity between EU member states in fighting the coronavirus pandemic because they just closed their borders. And the majority of respondents are not satisfied with the measures uh, the EU has taken so far against the coronavirus. But these are, again, I am just I just want to underline that these are the results of uh, April. And the condition may change, may have changed. Post-corona economic recovery plan is one of the important um, points in this crisis. Commission pro proposed it to be 750 billion euros, uh, 500 billion euros as grants and 250 billion euros in loans, which will be backed by common debt among the EU countries. There were some kind of opposition on the idea of borrowing together. France and Germany agreed on it, uh, but frugal four countries that we call frugal four, which are Netherlands, Denmark, Austria, and Sweden, uh, didn't accept it first. In the end, uh, they just uh, agreed and the grant became uh, 390 billion euros and the rest in loans, but they, they managed to come to a point. At the beginning of the crisis, it's difficult to note that member states are united in diversity. They prefer to become more introverted and focusing on their national borders instead of protecting their achievements within the EU in the last 60 years. But the economic recovery plan is a sign of uh, solidarity and unity. The Frugal Four and some other states had different views and priorities, but uh, they managed to stay united in budgetary issues. They found a way to compromise, and now they are in a better situation. Mobility or free movement in real and live achievement for uh, citizens. But with the crisis, the borders were closed and not just people, but medical supplies movement were also restricted. On uh, 17th of March to, uh, 2020, the member states agreed on decisions about external borders and travel restrictions for a period. However, there were also restrictions within the EU. This action is quite challenging for one of the EU achievements, which is free movement. They just closed the borders. In the context of uh, COVID-19, uh, Denmark uh, had some kind of border uh, closure till the 12th of November, Finland till 25th of 5th of uh, August, Lithuania till 15th of August, Norway till 13th of August. But I have to say something that this is a live list and it's always changing every day according to the cases, the uh, member states are just announcing something in other, something different. The border issue is a little bit complex in terms of unity. Different timetables for opening or closing borders, different lists for which countries the borders will be opened or closed, and different measures and rules in letting people to their countries. They may some of these ones uh, tests and some ones be uh, just locked down for a little. There's the last three marks, I can say, crisis came one after one in the EU in the last decade. Even if all countries are not affected the same, nearly all of the countries felt the threat. Neither the world nor the EU was prepared for this crisis, for COVID-19 crisis. They could not see the threat beforehand and couldn't respond properly at first. It, looked time, uh, it took time the EU to react to the virus, but now the preparedness of the EU is better than March and uh, April. In the future, the EU may develop policies to be ready for such health-related crises. And they have some plans. Uh, they had uh, some kind of co uh, collaborations now. The, we, we have to say that the EU is a dynamic union. It's not stable. It will learn from its abilities, its uh, experiences, and uh, move according to the new situations and conditions. Thank you. Thank you very much for listening to me.